Good afternoon. Hello? <laughs> just checking, just checking. Jason and I live in the future. We've lived there for a long time. We've come back here to share some ideas and thoughts with you about the future. But in fact, we're all time travelers. You traveled in time too. You remember the past, you live in the present, and you imagine the future. A majority of you are asked to do tactical things. We think this week, this month, this quarter, this year. A few of you think strategically, three to five years. How many of you think beyond five years or paid to think beyond five years in your work? A few people? You get the idea. Most of us are tactical in our thinking and strategic. We don't think past five years. For thousands of years, we have used tools to extend our reach. The Industrial Revolution gave us these mechanical muscles. But now, the Information Revolution is giving us mechanical minds. Work is one of the things we do that we spend a lifetime doing, but only a moment truly contemplating. What is the future of work? For uh, today, artificial intelligence is diagnosing disease. It's providing legal advice. And it's estimated that half of US jobs are at risk of automation over the next five years. And if you think you're safe because you're a creative worker, well, think again. Software is now just beginning to make music. It's creating art, and it's able to write news articles. William Gibson says, the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. The reason companies want to automate, it's simple. Robots don't get sick, they don't require health care, and they don't ask for a raise. Robots and AI are often better at any given task than these meat suit counterparts. Automation means that companies can be more profitable while employing fewer people. So whether you live in a small town or not, understanding the impact of this will be key to preparing for its effects. Now you may be wondering, where do I fit in all of this? Well, if you're a parent or if you're just getting your career started, you'll have a different perspective than someone entering retirement. I'm a baby boomer. I've seen tremendous change in my life. As a child, I listened to the radio and the Lone Ranger. In my 20s, I saw men land on the moon. And later in my life, I saw the fall of the Berlin Wall. There have been three major forces impacting my life. They are globalization, demographics, and technology. In my hometown, a small Midwest farming community, the only factory employing 300 people, closed when the work was moved to Juarez, Mexico, leaving behind angry, disappointed, and frustrated people. 300 people worked at that, at that factory, Marathon Electric. Change happened faster in my home hometown than we could adapt to those changes that were occurring. Demographics has impacted me throughout my life. I'm, I'm the member of the largest demographic group to hit the, hit the school system, to hit the job market, and now to hit the healthcare system. There are over 10,000 of us baby boomers eligible to retire every day for the next 20 years. 10,000 of us for the next 20 years, got it? At that rate, the entire population of Holland, Michigan would be retired in three days. Technology has had a great impact on me as well. In 1981, I wrote a software program that could read the Wall Street Journal. Now, if I would have stuck with that, we would call it Google, but we didn't. <laughs> in 1987, I started a company to predict carpet behavior using data analytics. To my generation, technology has been this revolution. Now there is a new revolution underway. It affects the future of work for you and for those that you care about. We are thinking in a linear way in an exponential world. The choices we make today will be determining our future. We have moved past the point at which we can adapt fast enough. Therefore we, <clears throat> excuse me, therefore, we must anticipate the change and not just react. The pace is quickening, and until we anticipate where it is going, as a community, we will be left behind. 
Disruptive technology is nothing new. What is new is the rate at which the change is happening. Computer technology is evolving at an exponential rate. The processing power of a computer has been doubling every year for the last 40 years. The costs have fallen by 50%. My generation perceives change as evolutionary. I grew up blowing dust out of video game cartridges in the 1980s. And today I have a supercomputer that fits in my pocket. So to put this technology acceleration in perspective, imagine the pace of change in the 20th century, from the year 1900 to the year 2000, as 100 years of technological change. By contrast, the 21st century, the year 2000 to 2100, will be 20,000 years of technological change at today's rate. The days of being trapped in one location due to a job may not be the norm in the future. There are 50 million Americans in the gig economy. Today, it's not uncommon to work on multiple projects at the same time, with ad hoc teams of people from all over the world, all from a coffee shop. The end of the human workforce has been predicted before. Farm workers during the 19th century were left behind, and the arrival of steam power threatened workers. It was thought in the 1950s that computers would take over. So you may say, why is this time any different? People will say, oh, don't worry about it. We'll create more jobs. But the people who have done the research on this, from the World Economic Forum to the White House, have shown that the world of work faces massive change. This means we won't be able to sustain the same level we have in the past through new job employment. Large proportions of those put out of work will be in their 40s and 50s, with years to wait before they can retire. Automation will replace workers throughout the employment ladder. Customer service workers are already being replaced by kiosks. And mixed reality avatars could replace the need for clerks or service attendants entirely. It is hard to imagine now, but in the not so distant future, a digital world will be layered on top of the physical world at all times. Today, we're able to do things that 10 years ago would seem unimaginable. Likewise, in just a few years, reality itself will be affected by this digital revolution. When I asked the president of JR Automation, what percentage of our workforce on Holland, Michigan, are we going to have to reskill? His answer was, all of them. Get the idea? All of them. Computer technology has reached hockey stick growth with a billion of dollars being poured into artificial intelligence and robotic companies. This is the next era that has enormous consequences. Holland, Michigan economy has twice as many people per capita working in manufacturing than the rest of the country. When machines are capable of doing almost any job that a human can do, what will humans do? Presently, most of the jobs at risk of automation are these lower skilled or manufacturing level jobs. But now professional white collar jobs are at risk of automation as well. The next big thing is robo advice. These are algorithms that are able to recommend savings and investments in the same way that a financial advisor would. Another example are robo doctors. These are algorithms that can scan thousands of drug interactions and find patterns from medical history in staggering new ways. As technology doubles every 18 months, machines will be able to outperform humans at almost any task. Fields such as loan officers, accounting, insurance claims, and other repetitive tasks will be at risk of automation. AI will outcompete humans in ways that mechanical muscle never could. People need to become continuous learners. They have to be always reskilling themselves to fit back into the workplace. Since 1975, the majority of income, the majority of profits have gone to capital rather than to labor. Some leaders now are advocating that we have a guaranteed minimum income. Already there are experiment studies underway. We are headed towards a world of abundance for some and great social inequality for others. This is our probable future based on our current trends. We need to ramp up attention on this important topic. 
Here's why. The rise of intelligent machines will take away millions of jobs. If we don't pay attention, we're going to see a job crisis leading to increased inequality and possibly social unrest. There are choices to make about how we're going to provide a reasonable standard of living for the many people that will be displaced. People feel abandoned, they feel vulnerable, and they're looking for a better future. I know what you're probably thinking, why all the doom and gloom? We've weathered economic storms before. If you're an owner or a shareholder, times are pretty good. Stock market is at an all-time high, corporate profits are at an all-time high. However, as income inequality spreads, Consumers will lose their, communities will lose their economic viability. This will result in increases in crime, drug abuse, domestic violence, and suicide. What happens when we become this bifurcated society? Capital has taken all the marbles. Who is going to buy the products that the robots make? Who's going to uh, buy the services that they provide? This is a possible future, and it's bleak. But that doesn't mean that small towns can't compete. All the planning and thinking won't do us any good if we adhere to the status quo. We need radical minds, mindsets for this radical time. We need community leaders to rise up. Fearing the other, the outsider, whoever they may be, is a perspective of scarcity. Displacement doesn't just affect those in a far-off land. It can happen when a software eats your job, when a robot takes over your production line, or a new technology puts you completely out of business. The people that you're looking at right now, they may be displaced from their country, but it's possible that in the near future, us in our community, we may be displaced from our jobs. There is a gig economy that is crucial for the future of work. Because these workers, they have no physical boundaries. They value freedom and flexibility. They are economic engines bringing new dollars into our community with five times greater economic, economic impact than the traditional manufacturing jobs of the past. Let's envision a preferred future, one that we want to have happen. And let's do that together. Hope lies in our ability to rapidly deploy new skills. It means that we can create wealth with newly acquired skills and teams of people we have. To prosper as a community, we must anticipate the rapidly approaching changes, reposition ourselves, and ride the, tide, the, ride the wave of the of tide of change. There are, several, uh, there are several examples in our community, and you all know them. The 40-year energy plan, the, uh, the 40 year energy plan, the snow melt system, and a lot of other as aspects, the model community initiative, the future search, all of those are good examples of how we've gone about planning our future. Now we have to rethink our future again based on this evolution of the, of the technology. To create the preferred future, we'll need three things. We'll need the wisdom from the past, we will need the leadership of the present, and a compelling vision for the future. As a community going forward, we will need to build economic and social bridges, we'll need to broaden our networks, and we'll need to create networks of networks. We will need to value diversity and become open and accepting of others, and, we'll need, and we would need to become owners and investors, and in particular, we need to own the robots. By embracing change, using our strength as a community, we can grow our talent pool, we can upskill our workers, we can rethink ways of doing things, and, and we can create something for the common good. Where there is no vision, people perish. Proverbs 28, 29, 18. Jeff Bezos of Amazon says, it's the first inning. It might even be the first guys up at bat. We're in the golden age of AI. People have a unique competitive advantage over machines. It's our ability to empathize, to express emotion, and connect the dots between these seemingly random events, people, things, and ideas. This will guard humans against obsolescence. 
until at least the robots learn to do it better. And then at which point, I hope we can be their pets. <laughs> the best way for a small and medium-sized community to, com to prepare is to do whatever we have to do to retain and attract good quality people. They will think different. They will have new ideas. And yes, they will want to blend their own unique, brilliant insights into our communities. We have an opportunity and an obligation as business and community leaders. Can you envision a preferred future rather than simply accepting the status quo and optimizing for the next quarter? The next decade will look nothing like the last decade. What are we going to do today to prepare for a future that is 80% certain? What are we going to do when a large part of the labor force is unemployable through no fault of their own? It is coming. The question is, as a community, will we choose to embrace change? In our preferred future, a learning center will provide lifelong learning and training. The learning center would be limited, not be limited to just offering degrees, but offering certificates and offering 24-7 20, learning. Technology will let be leveraged to reskill our workforce. We'll use technology to advance our, our community, much like anyone using Khan Academy, Khan Academy, a couple of you, some folks, it'll be like Khan Academy on steroids. Connectivity will be the key, and one of the things we're, we've launched here in Holland, Michigan, is a fiber optic initiative. The Board of Public Works has shown great leadership in starting this initiative downtown. We will need to implement also the Model Community Initiative, which has three parts, governance, education, and economic development. It is time to be daring. What if we could build a self-sustaining community, not only in infrastructure, but in access to information and talent? What would a freelance guild look like? Solo practitioners referring projects, sharing expenses, building bridges to other communities, and a network of networks of people? What would happen if local corporations, banks, and businesses supported these economic engines of growth? It is more than overcoming a fear of failure. It's acceptance of failure as part of the learning process. In technology circles, there's this saying, fail fast. Failure is learning. Failure is an event. It is not who we are. There are those that hope to go through life and safely arrive at death. Get out of the idea that it's a bad thing to mess up. I want to be as blunt as a punch in the eye. If we can't do that as a community, we risk extinction. Our future will be determined by the choices we make today. We cannot accept, we can accept the current trends as inevitable and just let things happen, or we can strike out on a bold new future for our community. And by embracing the coming changes and applying them to create the preferred future that was intended for us. We don't have to be like Austin, Boulder, Silicon Valley, or even Grand Rapids. We can be uniquely us. There's a unique history, a unique set of skills and insights. It is what makes us special. We're friendly people. The lakes are beautiful. We have elephant ears and tulip time parades and farmer's markets and Cinco de Mayo festivals with amazing tacos. We have phenomenal food. We make awesome craft beer. We value close relationships with friends and family. We're a resilient group of people, and I'm optimistic for our community's future. We are like the ship just leaving the channel, and at the mouth of the channel, we're going to determine our course. Where are we going to go, and then what are we going to do to get there, and how are we going to adjust our course throughout our, our lifetime? It's up to us to choose. What course are we going to sail for our community? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.